I'm going to give you 10 things, 10 things that you must do if you want to date a minister, 10 things. was inspired by a woman you know who you are she uh, sent me a message she's like I'm about to get married to a pastor do you have any advice and as I begin to type I say Lord help me Jesus and he began to give me this teaching that we're going to cover today so number one if you want to date a minister you need to have a prayer life why do you need to have a prayer life? Because you need to be able to cover that minister in prayer. You need to be able to cover them in prayer because guess what? They are God's anointed. And we know that the anointing attracts certain attacks and, you know, witches don't like God's anointed. False prophets don't like God's anointed. You know, all kind of crazy things they got to go through because they are on the front line and they're always going through something even though that, you know, they, uh, they have a calling on their life. They're still flat at the end of the day and they need you in their corner if you're supposed to be married to them or courting them and they need you to speak life into them encourage them pray against the warfare that they may encounter it's plenty of times i have to preach pray prophesy and i'm going through my own life you know but i still have to do what i was called to do you know i had to put a smile on my face even though my heart was broken in the inside so you know i i don't want anyone that didn't have a prayer life so i thank god for my spouse that that prays for me because i go through some stuff amen so if you want to date a minister you need to make sure that you have a strong prayer life number two you know, you need to know who you are in God. You need to know who you are in God. There's nothing worse dating someone that doesn't understand who they are. And they're constantly maybe trying to, uh, you know, maybe feel a little jealousy or something like that. You know, you need to know who you are in God. I, I said, I told God, you know, that I didn't want to be connected just to anyone. I don't want to be connected to someone that don't understand my calling, my purpose, my assignment. So you need to know who you are in God. You know, you cannot get intimidated by the anointing on their life. You cannot question it like, oh my God, another book. Yes, you know, I know my husband jokes about it. You know, but that's what I'm called to do. You know, look at the fruits. Uh, look at every, every month or every other month I'm putting out a book because God has given me so much. And I need to pour out into you guys. Amen. Magazine, a publishing company. I, I give God praise. I'm not boasting or anything like that. But that's what I'm called to do. Amen. So I couldn't just date anyone that didn't understand the calling on my life. The same thing with you guys. You got to know who you are because when you know who you are you won't question the, your, your, your um, minister's assignment but you will get busy yourself for God all right number three you got to be mindful amen that this minister that you're dating this pastor prophet apostle evangelist you know that they have to be accessible to God's people let me say it again they have to be accessible you can't just say, okay, you're mine, mine, mine. Okay, that part of your life is over. You're going to be my housewife now, cook all my meals, or you're going to be mine. You know, no, 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 no. Let me tell you something. They have a calling on their lives and people want to need them. So you got to be unselfish and share your spouse with the world, you know, in, in a way. Yes, there's going to be boundaries. There has to be boundaries for any healthy marriage, any healthy relationship. But you got to realize, okay, you know, this is God's child and they have an assignment on their life. And yes, people are going to ask my spouse for prayer. People are going to ask my spouse for a word. People are going to need and, uh, you know, need my spouse to encourage them. So I got to be mindful that they have to be uh, accessible in uh, uh, some kind of way. You know, maybe it's from nine to five, you know, after five is our time, or maybe it's from nine to nine, you know, but after that it's our time or their time with God. But you got to be mindful that you have to be mindful that, you know, that they're a minister. They got a calling on their life. 
Amen. So you got to understand their time. You got to understand their time. And listen, and I'm just, just a little sidebar that, you know, if you're dating a, man, a minister uh, and you're important to them, they're going to make time for you because we all make uh, time for what's important, right? All right. So number four, you can't get jealous. You can't get jealous of women or other men that may flock to your minister, your spouse. I'm talking about somebody in court. If you're, if you're courting a minister or a pastor or maybe after marriage, you can't get jealous. You know, see, I know how to pray those Jezebels away, those seductress away in the spirit. I know um, how to say, uh-uh, I see you. You know, I see you, Jezebel. I see you, Floozy. I see you. And I'm going to take you before God because I know that I got a connection with heaven. I know that I feel God every day. So I'm not going to let some person come in here and try to seduce my husband. See, there's no room for jealousy. When you know who you are in God, and I go, I'm going back to number two. Amen. That you got to know who you are in God. You can't get jealous. All right. So yeah, you put a smile on your face and praise the Lord and bless them. But you don't have to, you don't have time to be jealous. Mm -mm. See, no one person, and, and this is another sidebar, no one person is going to do everything and complete, uh, satisfy you 100%. Amen. We all got flaws. We all got shortcomings. But that's why it, it takes God to fill the rest of that void in your heart. Amen. It takes God to complete you inside of your heart. So you can't get jealous. All right, so I pray for deliverance. If you're jealous, because listen, jealousy is going to push that person away. I don't want to date nobody jealous that, you know, if I was to smile or something, they would be jealous or someone wants to look at me, they would be jealous. I don't have time for that. Amen. You know, listen, hallelujah. God created us to be fearfully and wonderfully made. There's going to be other people that may find me attractive, you know, but I thank God that my husband is not the jealous type. Amen. So you got to know who, what you got. You got to know at the end of the day that, ha, huh, this is my pastor, my minister. I marry him or her. Amen. And they're going to come home to me. They're coming home to me. I got their last name. Amen. So there's no room for jealousy when you want to date a minister or, or, or if you're married to a minister. You, we don't have time for that. Don't even take the bait. Don't even entertain jealousy. Amen. All right, number five, you need to be a helpmate for your husband, all right? Our men on here from dating a, 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 a minister, you know, help. Because guess what? The assignment on your spouse's life or the assignment on the person's life that you're courting, if they're a minister, it is bigger. It is bigger than them. They're going to need some help. Because, you know, God may give them the vision. They may be the visionary, but still, they're going to need some help. So bring your gifts. Put down the pride. Bring your gifts and say, okay, you know, I, I can serve unto God. I can serve you unto God. Uh, and, you know, I may have an anointing for I'm um, just putting, you know, me, my, my husband in here. I got an anointing for photography. You know, I got an anointing for music. I got an anointing, you know, for singing. I got an anointing for prayer. I got an anointing for uh, administration, for helps. You know, I can do something to help take the load off of you, baby. Because guess what? I don't want you to die early. Amen. I want to uh, live a long life with you. Amen. I want to enjoy my time with you. So therefore, I'm going to take some burden off of you. Amen. Man, you don't have to pray for all these people by yourself, baby. I want to get in here and let's pray together uh, on this prayer list. You know, you don't have to uh, prophesy to all these people or minister to all these people. What can I do? You know, seek God and see what you can do to help them. Because guess what? Ministry is 24-7. It's 24-7. You know, you may think you want to do one thing, but then, you know, God will place somebody else in your pathway right then and interrupt your plans. He will interrupt your plans. You have to stop, maybe pray for with somebody and just disrupt your day or your plans. Amen. Or you might have to uh, prophesy to someone or something. It's always something. My inbox is going off all the time. Amen. Whenever I, I can make a simple video, you know, and then next thing I know, I'm getting all these requests. Amen. So it's nonstop. All right. So be a helpmate. 
Don't add any stressors to the relationship. Help them. Help them. All right, the next thing we're going to talk about, uh, if you want to date a minister or marry a minister, you got to be prepared to live a spontaneous life. Yes, a spontaneous life. Because guess what? God is a spirit. And his spirit is life and truth. Amen. And he is spontaneous. If you really let God move a, uh, move a God, you may have your little sermon typed out or whatever written out. But then when God starts moving, you might as well throw that sermon out the window. There are plenty of times I say, oh, I'm, I'm going to you know, read from here or speak on these notes I took. I can't even get to those notes because God is so spontaneous. So being that, you know, you got to live a spontaneous life that means that hey what happened if god say pack all your stuff up give your stuff away move across the across the country you know i know it's difficult i know it may not feel good i know it may go over your head but guess what the words the, god's ways are higher than our ways or his ways are different than our ways his thoughts are higher than ours so we may not understand everything at that right now moment but god or later reveal it on uh, us you know later on so we have to be prepared to live a spontaneous life you can't be complaining. You don't want to be baggage to the assignment because God will cut you off. <laughs> I'm telling you. So, you know, just be open. And say, okay, God, Lord, I'm marrying this minister and I know they got a calling on their life and I know you're calling them, you know, and I know that if we need to move to another region, you must going to prosper us in this region. So, okay, God, I, I may have some connections over here, but I want to let them go. Just like Abraham let all his kindred go in Genesis chapter 12 to go after the promise that you spoke to him. I'm just going to be open-minded, you know? So God, if you're, you're, if you're calling us to, to leave Chicago and move down to, uh, Miami, you know, then that's what I'm going to, I'm going to have to do that, Lord. If you call me, God, to leave out of California, move to Georgia somewhere, then, then that's what I'm going to do. Oh, I know I got family over here, but maybe I can't walk in my full assignment over here. So you're calling me and my husband or my, my, my spouse to move across the cr country, Lord God. So, uh, just be open, you guys, to be able to leave things behind if it's necessary. You know, sometimes you, it's required. You know, when I moved from Colorado to North Carolina, I had to leave a lot of things. I had to throw away a lot of stuff because I could not take that baggage with me. And, you know, as I begin to walk with God and just, you know, uh, have a new life, a new journey, you know, he's slowly adding things. He's slowly restoring things. So you just got to be open. All right. Because you don't want to be a hindrance to your spouse's calling or assignment. All right. So... The next thing that we have to do is come into agreement. Come into agreement, you know, with the vision on their lives and help fulfill it. You know, there's nothing worse than, you know, a divided relationship. The word of God says a house divided against itself cannot stand uh, a three, four, a three strand cord. It's not easily broken. How can two walk together unless they agree? So anything that's not in uh, in line with the vision is division. And we know that the two shall become one flesh in marriage. So it cannot be the vision. You cannot be on two different pathways and talking about you married, you know, because the enemy could definitely come in like that. All right. So you need to have, you know, a common goal and work together for this vision. Maybe God gave this minister uh, a church or uh, something to build unto God, you know, or a new church or uh, some kind of network or something. And you cannot be negative Nancy and, uh, you know, just all negative and all pessimistic, all kind of crazy foolishness. I'm like, okay, babe. Ooh, you know, sometimes God will give your spouse a vision. It's bigger than him or her. And you'd be like, that's ridiculous. That would never happen. Are you sure that's God? You know, you can't do that. You know, because... Listen, that vision came from God because it's bigger than them. And God needs, you know, they, they need God's help to get it done. So I know it probably sounds crazy in the natural, but guess what? We serve a supernatural God. So just come into uh, agreement with the vision. Amen. And speak life over it. Don't, don't be a faith sucker, you know, or someone that's going to just steal the person's faith. No. Or be an asset, not a hindrance. So the next thing, you know, if you want to date a minister, you got to be mindful of your time with God. You know, as a prophet, I had to spend a lot of time with God. If I don't, trust me, the Holy Spirit inside of me is vexed. It's so vexed and so grieved. And I don't feel right. I feel a hot mess. My peace leaves. And I'm like, oh, God, I got to get in prayer. And oh, I got to shut the world out. Oh, I got to get in this word. And 
all kind of stuff like that. So be mindful of their time with God and don't ever try to compete with that. You don't, don't compete with that because you want them to spend time with God because that's their lifeline. Jesus is their lifeline. You know, I can't do nothing without God's presence. Amen. I, I can't do anything. You know, I love feeling his presence every day. I love feeling his fire now. I'm just talking. You know, I love feeling his fire. I love feeling his the anointing. I, I just love it. You know, because I know that I'm not alone. I, and it brings me a sense of peace and comfort just to know that, oh, God is real. He's with me even now. And I just put my hands out and I just feel his fire. It just feels good. So, you know, be mindful of the time with God. Don't compete with that because, you know, God will remove you. Trust me from the picture because guess what? Your spouse don't belong to you. They belong to God. Amen. The person that you're courting, the minister that you're courting don't belong to you. They belong to God. And God is allowing you to enter into their space with your your uh, spouse and him. That's how I look at it. You know, when God allowed you know, Tron to get married, he al allowed Tron uh, to be in my space with God. You know, that's how I, I see it. So don't ever compete with that. Okay. Okay. Just say, encourage them. Okay, babe, it's nine o'clock. You know, and this is, this is what Tron does for me. Babe, it's nine o'clock. Go pray. Babe, it's five o'clock. Go pray. Babe, it's midnight, go pray, you know, because you know I have set up certain times. So help them, help them be accountable, you know, uh, babe, go pray, you know, because that is their time to receive. And you want your, you want your uh, minister to have a fresh word from God. You want them to be effective in ministry. You want God to use them where lives are changed, right? So, you know, just think about it this way. They spend all their time pouring out to other people, pouring out to other people, and they need their time with God so God can pour back into them. You don't want them to have a nervous breakdown, do you? You don't want them to fall apart. They got to have time to study and pray. All right. So allow them to spend time with God so God can pour back into them and, he, and they can pour back out to his people. The next thing that we need to know when we are dating a minister is we got to do spiritual things together. You know, you got to fast. You got to fast together. You got to be on one accord. I know sometimes we like to eat. Ooh, trust me, I, I, I eat good, you guys, when I'm not fasting. So, but you got to do spiritual things together. When I fast, my husband has to fast according to the word. When he fasts, I got to fast, you know, according to the word. All right. You know, that's the only time, you know, and when you fast, don't be trying to have sex or anything like that. Come on now. You know, the word of God tells us about that. All right. So you got to be on one accord when, when fasting in marriage. All right. So fast together, you know, do devotions together, pray together, you know, do watch a spiritual movie together, something that is going to uh, enhance your relationship, spiritual, you know, invest in a uh, conference, invest in a retreat, do something spiritual that's going to help your marriage. Or, you know, relationship. You know, you want both you both of you want to grow together in God. You don't just want your minister growing and you you're not growing. You know, it's it's time to get off the breast milk, the spiritual breast milk. It's time to get off the milk, the bottle, amen. And let's eat the meat of the word. The next thing you want to do, you guys, you want to date a minister, is uh find ways, find ways that you uh can minister together. Find ways, you know, you may not want, you may not be behind the pulpit. You may not feel comfortable with that. I know a lot of people probably not comfortable with that, but Hey, and maybe everybody's not even called to that kind of ministry, but you can find your place. Trust me. You can find your place. You know, maybe your job is to sit and look pretty, you know, or maybe your job is to sit and, and pray for him or her when they're preaching the word, you know, find your place. Maybe your job is to usher. Maybe your job is to, uh, you know, help counsel behind the scenes. You know, trust me. Trust me, trust me, trust me. They may be a good preacher, but not a good pastor. All right. So you may be more a pastor, a pastor, a pastor, you know, pastor. You know, my, my husband, he he walks in the office of a pastor and um, he has the grace to deal with people that I don't have. You know, I don't want someone uh, telling me the whole life story because I, I just want to pray and God will allow me to pray prophetically. It is everything they're going through. Bam, I, I'm, I don't pray for it already through the leading of the Holy Spirit. You know, 
But my husband, on the other hand, he has more patience and grace. So we balance each other out, you know. Uh, so, he, and he's full of wisdom. So he have a little bit more patience to listen, you know. And, you know, I, I'm just like, okay, I, I'm just going to go head first up in the situation. I'm going to be on the defensive, amen, in the spirit. That's how I tackle things. But he looks at it from a different perspective. So anyways, find your place. Find your place. You know, you maybe you can counsel couples together, you know, and things like that. All right. So these are some of the things that you have to know uh, to date a pastor, minister. You know, number one, number one, have a strong prayer life. Number two, know who you are in God. Number three, be mindful that they have to be accessible. Number four, don't be jealous. Number five, help them with the vision. All right. Be hands on in that ministry. Number six. Be prepared to live a spontaneous life. Number seven, come into agreement with the vision. Uh, number eight, be mindful of their time with God. Number nine, do spiritual things together. And number 10, find your place. Find your place. All right? Find opportunities to minister together. So, so much you can do out there. All right? I love you guys. I pray this uh, teaching bless you guys. I love you. And I'll see you guys on the next broadcast. Deuces.